Do we have any more of this? Uh, uh, there's a big section where they talk about racism and... Uh, oh, we got to hear this. Okay, yeah. Let's see where it's Because uh, Marion Williamson, I think, has actually been pretty clear about American racism. And uh, we all know Dave Rubin. Ooh, maybe I should change the titles of more of my Mala New videos after this. All right, let's watch this. Okay, so you... I want to dive into some of the economic parts okay. of that in a little bit, but you said something. When, when I knew I wanted to have you on the show was during the debate, you said something that I thought this is actually completely unheard of for a, a Democrat, at least in 2019, to say. You said, I do not believe that the average American is racist. No, I don't. And yet... It seems, if you watch mainstream media, we are just caught in you're racist, you're racist, you're yeah. a bigot, you're a fascist, <laughs> you're a homophobe, you're a transphobe, this endless game. And unfortunately, and I say this as someone that was, you know, that I still consider myself liberal, but I'm, I'm a <laughs> lifetime Democrat, really, at least until the last two or so years, um, a lot of that's coming out of the left and from the Democrats, this labeling of everyone as racist. Well... I hear you and you're leaving out a very important factor, which is that the president, at least based on his tweets and his comments, <laughs> is. So I agree with you that uh, a smug, self-righteous, intolerant left-winger is no less dangerous to the emotional fabric of our country than a smug, self-righteous, intolerant right-winger. And some of the shutdown you shut up, you didn't say the right thing, comes from the left as much as the right these days. I will give you that, and it's dangerous and it's wrong. However, this president says things and is involved in it right now, which by any, by any measure are racist comments. Um, Who knew? And where else will you go with that? I can't well, well, this do you find it sort amazing. of almost impossible to have any kind of political... Uh, no, this is actually really significant. I, look... I don't even want to get into the debate of, of I, I think the notion of the average person being quote unquote racist, I'm actually going to fall on the Marion Williamson side in the sense that I think for practical intents and purposes, her frame is right. I also don't think racism is a winning strategy broadly with the actual like Democrat. No, that's, public. that's the point I'm making. Right. right exactly. I, so look, when what if we really interrogate interrogate it and we read uh, you know Kendi's book or the mismeasure of man obviously look this is a historically and structurally racist society so obviously racism li lives in each and every one of us that is the insight and the correct stance of the so-called SJW position or whatever now conversely I think where she is right, and I think totally if you're talking to people who are voting in a Democratic primary, there's plenty of people who might not use this, the, all the right terminology. They might even have genuine disagreements. They might even have some attitudes that you and I would genuinely find off-putting. But when it comes to the real foundational material stuff of like, are you on board for this material delivery and serious legislation on voting rights, civil rights, and even and the serious questions of economic redistribution, yeah, they absolutely can be on board for that. And that's where you focus on them. And that is where, again, all of the vampire castle scolding performativity has is a is vanishingly it is it is interesting to a fraction of the population. And mostly, by the way, a highly overrepresented, overeducated social media population. This is like not normal discourse for Americans across the board who are not in these spaces. So I have a little, I, I think she's right overall in her frame. I have a little bit of a problem with her. You know, I'll make this argument. If I'm on Dave's show, I'm only on pure offense because Dave is a bad actor. On the other hand, he has nowhere to go because she's completely disarmed his, all he has is that shtick. Because in my opinion, 100% he is a racist, in my opinion, and he on 100% a conduit for all of these things, knowingly or unknowingly. He could be unknowingly because he's clearly, to me, an extremely dim guy. But she's got, he's got nowhere else to go now. So what is he, we'll see where he goes. And then where else were you going with that? I can't well, well, do you find it sort of almost impossible to have any kind of political conversation that doesn't get whittled well, down yeah. to this? Because that sort of seems yeah. like where we're at. I don't even really know who's talking about policy anymore or, or really what I would rather talk about all day long, which is how much. 
Minor point. <laughs> you, you've trapped a Democratic candidate in your little studio. Talk policy, Dave. Yeah, I don't know, Dave. Your, the Dave, same this thing is a great about. opportunity. I mean, I'm sure you've got some really serious questions like, about I, how to implement Medicare for all. I hate talking <laughs> about how you know, censorious the left is every single episode of my show. Yeah, I, I mean, love it's the just such a, it's so boring Wouldn't to talk nice? about how moralistic the left at SJWs. I mean, there's literally one or two other things I'd like to vaguely talk about government is needed to do anything see anymore or or really what i would rather talk about all day long which is how much government is needed to do anything yeah, which i think would be a rich I don't place know. to I have think a discussion it's more complicated than that i think we need to walk and chew gum at the same time um what? on one hand i certainly understand what you mean about how the public square is a place where it's almost impossible to have a conversation these days although you just need to not be on twitter too much you know that, that, <laughs> well, there are places that just make that worse that's not the place the for intelligent political conversation yeah however i'm a jew and I remember the first time I went to Yad Vashem. Have you ever, ever been to him? I have been, okay. yeah, in Jerusalem. Then you know, having been there, Hitler was saying things for years. He was saying what he believed, and he, was, and he said what he was going to do. The world didn't take him seriously. And so much... <laughs> Pause books it. Uh, people like Dave Rubin not, would not take them seriously. Exactly. Thank you. I am literally speaking to you, you a moral, empty-headed moron go ahead to do the world didn't take him seriously and so much and books have been written so many books have been written in years of analysis why didn't people leave why didn't take it seriously and the answer was clearly because nobody th everybody thought he was a crazy guy nobody took it seriously nobody thought it could actually lead anywhere but then once he started actually doing what he did and you looked back and you know you, you see these those films at Yad Vashem he was saying it and I, I'm sorry, we, the, we are naive to underestimate the danger of that kind of hate speech when it is coming from the highest perches of government. So, so, so do you, oh, you fundamentally believe that Trump has that in him? That I'm not here to, I, 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 I don't need to psychoanalyze the president. What, what, I, uh, what I'm speaking to is the effect on government and the country the words of the president. And the words of the president are very serious. And the words of the president affect not only people in this country, but they affect other countries too. Everybody's listening to the, to the words of the, of the American no. president. <laughs> and yes, I think it's time for Americans um, to awaken to the lessons of history. Yeah, yes, but the college campuses. Yes, I do. But I, there is very, mean very college Twitter now, account. Now, you said what we also need to be thinking about, I do too. And including the fact that, you know, now we're going through this business while the president said this about these congresswomen and now these congresswomen. And what is the Democratic Party going to say about these congresswomen? Where I do think this is enough is enough has to do with the fact that the deeper levels of systemic racism, and there is systemic racism in this country, Here we ways go. in which social policy, Pause economic it. policy. I'm sorry, a uh, lot of points now that we're getting to, because th this of course is the real issue. And th to me, right, I think that on the, I think she's exactly right about how to approach people as individuals and where persuasion and the censoriousness and everything. But look, that's just not a campaign strategy, right? But this is the area and the fact that people like Dave Rubin will always deny systemic and institutional racism. And of course, all that overlaps with all with our history, Rubin class literally. structure. That's his whole reason for existing. That's the whole reason you're, uh, you know, that's the, that's, that's the whole show. He's he literally gonna, went to Oxford. That's what he talked about at Oxford. Right. This, I mean, he's going to have nothing on this. Let's, let's actually let, this is props to her. Let's play more of this has to do with the fact that the deeper levels of systemic racism, and there is systemic racism in this country, ways in which social policy, economic policy, criminal policy is tinged by obvious racial prejudice. There is no doubt so, about so that. So can you give me an example of that? Yes. You could say white people and black people use drugs at the same rate, but a black person is liable to get a far harsher sentence for the same oh, drug no. offense. So there is racial disparity throughout Wait, I'm a libertarian, so I can't sentencing. argue with that. <laughs> Another example is there are millions of American children who go to school every day in schools that don't even have the adequate school supplies with which to teach a child to read. And if a child cannot learn to read by the age of eight, then the chances of high school graduation are drastically diminished and the chances of incarceration are drastically increased. Oh, but I heard about These brain sizes. Live, 
many of them in, what are, in what's called America's domestic war zones, where psychologists say the PTSD of a returning veteran from Afghanistan or Iraq is no more severe than the, than the PTSD of these children. Now, these children, this is how it works in America. We primarily base our educational funding on property taxes. And since there's higher poverty among black Pause children. Pause it. Are you guys that, ready to uh, give her some props? I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. We ready to give her some props? I, I'll take this opportunity to say, uh, I was wrong, Marianne. Good job. Good. Doing good. <laughs> All right. Let's watch a little bit more. Taxes. And since there's higher poverty among black children, that means that if, if, if you are a child growing up in a nice neighborhood in America, you have a very good chance of a high quality public school education. But public school education should not be better for the rich than for the poor. What? So because most of these poverty-ridden neighborhoods uh, are neighborhoods inhabited by people of color. Not that poverty is only people of color. Even though among people of color you have a higher rate of poverty, poverty itself is a huge and almost ubiquitous reality in America among mm -hmm. white people, too. Second so choice So when you see things like this, for instance, as president, I wish to see this change. I wish to see every school in America a palace of learning, culture, and the arts. There has been uh, described, there's a term that was first uh, uh, coined by Marion Wright Edelman, cradle to prison pipeline. And when you look at uh, the, uh, the sentencing of black Pause people it. and people of color. I love the fact that, first of all, okay, Dave's dumb, Dave's agreeable, and he's also, I'm, to me, it looks like he's getting anxiety because his audience is going to have a fucking meltdown. I need to look through the comments. Yeah, actually. it's oh, like, absolutely. she's lying, look up. And then, and then, and then what's great is I have no doubt the comment. I mean, look, maybe there'll be some, oh, it's so nice that you finally had a human being on your show instead of like all of these troglodytes you usually host. But uh, I will, I, I, I think that the responses will be overwhelmingly absolutely disgusting and racist but go ahead let's play one minute more and then we'll, we'll move on we'll do more of this in the post game though in our prison system absolutely to deny that there's not a terrible uh racial injustice going on underneath there is just to uh willfully deny the facts so there's this video of uh going he doesn't address it. He talks about he this video that... Uh, of what? It was... Uh, well, we can let him explain, I guess. Let's just see this for a hey, Although I think it's from January where you were giving a speech and you had the white people in the mm -hmm. audience uh, <clears throat> basically go up to the black people mm -hmm. in the crowd and they kind of put their hand on them and then you right. read... Brett Weinstein would like set the place on fire before doing Brett that. Brett Weinstein would be like, I'm not apologizing to, I'm not apologizing to any black people. I did nothing wrong. And I'm going to go on Joe Rogan and then I'm going to talk to Peter Thiel and it's very scary. And, and you know, in the 1990s, I was a big fan of Patrick Ewing and the idea that I have to apologize even though I rooted for the 94 Knicks is very scary to me. And if we're being right about this, the, 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 the science, black people commit all the crime but i can't say that anymore i just hey. gave you the leading light of the intellectual dark web right there go ahead it almost was like a sermon really what it was just it was your yeah. speech and you talked about white supremacy and you talked about reparations right. and all of these things <clears throat> um so for me watching it mm -hmm. as, as someone that i despise identity politics <laughs> i think it is what has it's it's the root of almost Plus everything it, that is sorry. wrong right for me watching it as a one-trick pony with no sense of history or empathy, I found it somewhat confusing and upsetting, but I also didn't know that you were going to be talking about Marion Wright Edelman and actual policy, so I really appreciate that that video exists to give me a comfortable pivot point to talk about something that doesn't mean require me to do any actual analysis. I think it is what has, it's, it's the root of almost everything that is wrong right now, which is why I'm struggling so much with what I would say is my former team, no, let's I, say. I, um, there was a, a certain collective guilt to what you were saying that, that was really troubling to me. I was really struggling when I was watching it. Okay. So. Um, not that your intentions were <laughs> not good, so, uh, you know what I mean? But that great. the idea of these sort of guilt-ridden white people, many of whom probably, well, certainly none of them in that room owned slaves, and probably many of them never mm -hmm. came from yeah. descendants of slaves, nor would I think that you're guilty for your father's right. sins, much less your right. great-grandfather's uh, oh, great sins, etc. cetera. Um, there was a certain collective guilt to it okay. that, that struck me as, as scary. Do, okay. Does that <laughs> No, not at all, but I'll tell you why. Great. There's a difference between taking blame 
and taking responsibility. Yes! The German, German nation has paid Pause 89 it. billion. I'm sorry. That, that is actually the, I'm sorry. You can tell me that I'm like, you know, Deepak communist here, but that is actually a beautiful distinction. Nobody's talking about that. In fact, to the extent that character exists of some performative, woke, guilt-ridden person who's always show, like, yeah, I, I think it's pretty clear how much disdain that I have for that and how totally disconnected that is from either a material analysis for politics or being like a proper, you know, normal human being responding to the grotesque history of this country. Blame versus, re and, and reality presently of this country. And your responsibility in that, because of course, that's the other thing is that it's all present tense, which Dave has no understanding of, but that is so beautiful. It's not moralization. It's not blame. It's not making a big show. It is responsibility. And I, you know, I'll tell you what, I watched that video. I thought that video, and it's funny because I'm, I'm not into this sort of, I think most of that stuff is often a substitute for building solidarity in politics. I like Adolf Reed's critique of a lot of that. I thought that ceremony actually, to me, the way she did it made a lot of sense. Yeah, and it's not like to take responsibility for actually owning slaves. It's to take responsibility for a system you're actively benefiting from and not just trying to obscure that We are that an inheritors fact. of a context that was designed to benefit us and was built on the rape, pillage, and murder of other people. And it wasn't just slavery, you fucking moron. It's gentrification it's policing and on the other direction it's colonialism and imperialism and it's not like oh i feel so bad because that and frankly and look it's not the same thing but that that's reducing it to the same level of of moral cause politics it's not and it's it, it's exactly it's recognizing that we are to quote hillary clinton living history and we need to take responsibility for that history in the present tense and it worries Dave Rubin so much because he then has to put things in context and his entire worldview is about taking things out of context. I want to go right. get a smoothie. I don't want to do this. I want a smoothie. I don't want context to exist. Dave Rubin, by the way, and this is great. Though. Dave Rubin Dave Rubin can walk around and be the, the blameless dopey is all day, but he does have to take responsibility. All right, let's play one more minute of this. I'm actually really liking this. This is great. Dollars to Jewish organizations since World War II. And right. by the time they started paying those reparations, it was the generation after the generation after the war. That's right. Many of the people who started paying those reparations were children during that war. Nobody was saying... But it was to the people who survived. Not to no, not to no, generations no. after. Absolutely, to, no, it's to Jewish organizations. Absolutely, a friend. Absolutely, it wasn't just to the people who survived. And let's talk about how few survived, okay? Yeah. So no, it was not. <laughs> it was to future generations. This is the issue. It is a spiritual concept. They wrote in Catholics, checks. Catholics go to confession, and uh, in Judaism there is the concept of Yom Kippur, yes. which is the Day of Atonement. And in Alcoholics Anonymous, you have to take a fearless moral inventory and admit the exact nature of your character I'm defects. I'm down. Pause. An I'm sorry. That's also the power, and that's why it isn't. It needs to be material reparation, but that's also why it needs to be a truth and reconciliation commission. That's exactly it. It's an atonement. It's a full accounting of the present reality and the history. This is amazing. She's articulating it really well, and she and Dave is the perfect moral and intellectual void to symbolize. If we're going to talk in these terms, whiteness. She's apathetically steamrolling him. She right is now. apathetically steamrolling him. Yes. Or a nation. You can't have the future you want unless you're willing to clean up the past. Now, nobody is saying, I mean, my grandparents came from Russia my, uh, in uh, two generations ago. Nobody's, I don't believe that, you know, I personally, I, I didn't own slaves. That's not what we're talking about when you're talking about <laughs> national atonement and national amends. For instance, I want to tell you some, something else that I think a lot of Americans don't realize. In 1988, Ronald Reagan signed the American Civil Liberties Act, and everybody who had been a prisoner a surviving prisoner of the Japanese internment camps in World War II were given between twenty and twenty-two thousand dollars. Now this is the deal. A lot of Americans. But that, that was the direct people. That, that were was. Affected, that yes. was. But let's let's yeah. talk about this. The first slaves were brought over uh, from Africa, enslaved people, uh, sixteen nineteen. Uh, slavery was not abolished until 1865, so that's 250 years. That was followed by another 100 years of institutionalized violence against black people in America. Lynchings, segregation, Ku Klux Klan. This is domestic terror. 
black code laws which ensured subpar economic and social and political opportunities. When slavery was abolished in this country, the U.S. government promised, because there were four to five million slaves at that time, the, the U.S. government promised that every former enslaved person, family of four, would receive between, a, a 40 acres and a mule. That would have given people who All right, we got to go. But I just love this. Just Jesus. No, that's amazing. Look at this dope taking it on. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so perfect because she's treat she is treating him like a kind of like dense but eager pupil. Oh, that's great. I mean, little did Dave realize that I mean, look, it's not going to be the same dunk fest as if I or, you know, Sam or Benjamin Dixon or, you know, Anna Kasparian, well, particularly Anna Kasparian. <laughs> But, like, uh, this is a dunk. I don't think he was expecting, like, oh, look, I have Marion Williamson, and then I can pretend that I'm open-minded. I don't think he was expecting. And, th and this is also a reason genuinely why I, you know, I frankly oppose underestimating her. I think she's bringing something very valid to the table here. I think it's also just funny to note that Dave's got this weird thing where he might be lucky that Buttigieg didn't join the uh, his show because he's not really up to scruff when it comes to this stuff like the that questions he's asking true. aren't that actually true. that they're, they're, he thinks that they're tough because he hears like his echo chamber like dunk on like aoc with them all the time but actually these are things that these politicians will have heard before right no he's been out no absolutely i mean he's been playing like in the kiddie pool and he thinks that this is like powerful persuasive stuff that is actually really funny because it i mean as much as i'm not i really don't like Buttigieg. i think and it wouldn't have been worth doing because it's just not important enough but Buttigieg did a good job actually of putting fox news on the spot right. if he went on ruben and again there's no reason you go on ruben ruben just isn't important enough to do it but like they you agree. could have had the same scenario where Buttigieg could have been like hey you know i never heard of you and we still decided to like not cancel and you know because we want to speak to everybody but we did a little bit of research on you and like you're a racist idiot i'm a road scholar <laughs> that actually <laughs> thank god Buttigieg didn't do he it because i would have had to give him props for a couple of weeks. actually i think Buttigieg would have they would have agreed a lot about like college kids and stuff no i well Buttigieg used the phrase sjw in his memoir unironically um and and uh you know, observed uh, Iraq anti-Iraq invasion protesters and homeless people with a, I won't say anthropological distance, I'll just say distance because he wasn't curious. You've just watched a Michael Brooks show video and you can watch all of our full main live shows every Tuesday night at around 7 p.m. Eastern time and subscribe to get all of the clips you want. We're covering the globe. We're focusing on international relations, the intellectual dark web. We're having fun. We're doing deep dives with a lot of amazing guests. Of course, become a patron for the whole thing at patreon.com slash TMBS or subscribe to this YouTube channel and help us keep growing and get that content out there. Subscribe below.